Hello and welcome to this SimScale tutorial on simulation types. We offer a range of simulation types on the SimScale platform, and as it's one of the first steps in creating your simulation, it's also one of the most important. To get started on the right foot, we want to make sure you choose the simulation type that suits your application. Our simulation types can be broken down into two major categories. The first is flow modeling. These simulations model the movement and dynamics of fluids, for example, water, air, and oils. This area of simulation is often called CFD, or Computational Fluid Dynamics. Our first simulation type is the Incompressible Flow Module. This is our standard CFD solver. It simulates the dynamics of continuum fluids with speeds below Mach 0.3 which for air is about 100 meters per second. Many things can be done in this simulation module, from the simulation of valves, external vehicle aerodynamics, car park ventilation with passive scalars, and general flow mechanics. The applications possible with this module are endless, and it's generally a good place to start off when learning the platform. Next up is the incompressible LBM flow module. This is similar to the previous simulation type, but uses the Lattice Boltzmann method, a next generation way of approaching CFD that's incredibly fast, efficient, and always transient. It's generally used for external flows, for example, vehicle aerodynamics and structural wind loading. The two previous modules assumed incompressible flow, that is flow with no massive thermal gradients or high speeds above Mach 0.3. The compressible flow module is designed to tackle these types of flows. It can simulate fluids with speeds between Mach 0.3 and 0.7. Examples of these types of flows include aerofoils on subsonic planes, high-speed turbo machinery, and compressible valves. To simulate the heat transfer that occurs within a fluid, we have the convective heat transfer module. This models the heat that is convected around with the fluid and can be used to create simulations for thermal comfort and heating, ventilation, and cooling projects. For example, the simulations on the right are looking at HVAC systems for a theater space, inside a car, and a room. Where convective heat transfer only simulates the heat transfer occurring within the fluid, the conjugate heat transfer module simulates the heat transfer in the fluid along with the solids, and the interaction between those two. This makes it incredibly useful in applications such as electronics cooling and heat exchanger design, where heat is conducted through a solid and must be convected away by a fluid. We currently have two conjugate heat transfer modules, a version 1 and version 2. The version 1 is our standard old solver, but version 2 is a custom solver developed in-house and undergoing constant refinement. In general, version 2 will be faster and more accurate but version 1 has slightly more features at the moment. Following this, the multi-phase module is used to simulate systems of multiple fluids with different properties. Most often, this is the interaction between water and air in free surface flows, but it can also simulate mixing between multiple fluids. Our final flow simulation type is the pedestrian wind comfort module. This is a highly streamlined and unique analysis type, designed to simulate pedestrian wind comfort, structural loading, and the wind patterns in a city. It was created to give fast and accurate simulation results for architectural, engineering, and construction design. The second category of our simulation types are the structural analysis modules. These modules are designed to simulate the deformable behavior of structures. Where the previous flow modules were generally under the umbrella of CFD, or Computational Fluid Dynamics, these simulations are often called FEA, or Finite Element Analysis, due to their use of the finite element method. The first structural module is the static simulation type. This simulates the system's static loading response and deformable behavior without inertial or damping effects. This module can simulate simple static systems, along with contacts, non-linearities, non and time-varying systems, 
as long as inertia or damping plays no major role. The dynamic module, however, includes these inertial and damping effects, so it's used to simulate systems that have some dynamic response to loading, for example, impacts and drop testing, as shown by the GIFs on the right. Our next modules are the heat transfer and thermomechanical modules. The heat transfer module simulates just the thermal propagation of heat by conduction within a part. Then the thermomechanical module builds on this, also evaluating the stresses and deformations that result from this heating. Following this, we have the frequency analysis module. This module will simulate the resonant harmonic frequencies of a structure and output the associated vibrational shapes. This is useful to identify those resonant modes and design with them in mind. The final simulation type, the harmonic analysis, simulates the excitation of a structure. The stresses and deformations of the structure are then output as a function of the frequency. This allows us to simulate the structural performance of a design when subjected to periodic or vibrational loading. And that's all for this tutorial. Happy simulating.